You're listening to the Nintendo Powercast. Here's your hosts, N64 Josh and Destinot. What's going on? Welcome to episode 28 of the most professional Nintendo podcast on the internet. That's right. Do I amuse you? <laughs> Dude, you punched your mic so hard <laughs> right there. That was the best. But hey, this is episode 28 of the Nintendo Powercast. I'm your host, N64 Josh. Player two is Destinot. What's up, dude? Dude, we got uh oh man, I don't even know what gen console it was. What what was the first console to do f- to have four ports? Was it the N64? I figured think so. Know. Four ports native four ports natively, but yeah, that's could- what I mean. I mean, I'm not talking because I mean even the NES I think had a four port adapter. It did. It did. No adapters here though. No adapters here. Okay. All right. Well, hey, we got player three. Hate, what's going on? Or uh, you changed your name to N64 Hate in the Discord. We were trying to decide For between now. Hate, hate not, which was like kind of like a play on That's Destiny. Like you don't hate. Is that the anti, anti hate? Uh, hate not. I don't, yeah, I mean, I gotta play with it. Maybe it's like Dest to hate. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So, but then I have to the, work on it. While on stream, they picked N64 hate. So, which is it was I hate my life. 04 is this, is this gamer tag. So, welcome, bud. You're gonna be more of a regular around here, right? Uh, that's the plan. Okay, all that right. That is the plan. He's gonna bring the sexy. So. Be ready, everybody. My apologies to everybody. And player four. <laughs> player four tonight. Run. Bring up the rear. Jump. Stomp. Otherwise known as RJS. What's up, my friend? How's it going, everybody? It's going good. Going good. Amazing. Going, going good. We are, uh, we're glad you're here with us. Um, we're going to talk about you first. But before we do that, guys. We have our first, our first sponsor. If you'd like to get yourself a free audiobook from Audible, you can go to audibletrial.com slash NPC. And there you can get a book of your choice. Captain Logan often recommends Console Wars. We always recommend Ready Player One if you're a gamer. It's a really good book. And Spielberg has a movie coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, you got over 30,000 titles. If you're into Star Wars, you'll find something. Get yourself a free book, audibletrial.com slash NPC, and you'll help support this show. And we really, really appreciate it. Um, you mind if I recommend a book? Please. Yeah. American on Purpose by Craig Ferguson. Fantastic book. The Craig Ferguson? Like the ex talk show host? Yeah, it's but it's mostly about alcoholism and drug drug addiction. Yeah, he but it's really that. good. Huh. I'm gonna have to check it out because I'm a huge fan of his. Kids, make sure to ask your parents about that. Um, <laughs> we do this show live Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on twitch.tv slash n64josh. Come hang out with us. We'd, we'd, we'd love it if you did. You can also listen to the show on Podbean, iTunes, and Google Play. Just look for the Nintendo PowerCast. Now... All that's out of the way. All the fun stuff. We're, this can be a little different show. From here. It's all downhill. Yeah, it's all downhill after <laughs> this. So um, we have a lot to cover. And so we might kind of throw in what we've been playing. But for the most part, we're going to just we're gonna just rock and roll this thing. So run, jump, stomp. Yes, sir. Tell us about yourself. Tell us about the content that you create. Give us, give well, us the lowdown. I'm a Twitch streamer like yourself, and I love Nintendo, so I made a Nintendo podcast called uh, Nintendo Switchcraft, which you can find on iTunes and all the other places that you listed, Um, and I just love talking about video games, so that's why I decided to make uh, video game content, because there isn't enough out there. Mm. Right. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And so I... um, I heard the guys on the Switchcast mention that they were on your show. Is that correct? I know there was a cup. There was. I'm pretty sure. Didn't uh, you have one of them on? Yeah, I had KC from Switchcast on uh, on my show. Just an interview uh, back when I think it might have actually been before the actual Switch came out, but after the um, announcement. Uh, and he came on, and we talked for a little bit, and then. 
Uh, he invited me to go on his show. I think it was like a month ago, and we yeah. talked about it was oh, it was during E3. So it was at the e, it was the E3 show. I was on. I was on there. Right, right. So yeah, so I I remember hearing he mentioned you, and I immediately went over and listened to your cast, and then uh, I think the kind of the rest is history. I think I may have jumped into a stream, or I don't know, I don't remember, but here we are. We've been into each other's streams a few times, just kind of hung out. We even recorded a podcast on your show that was all about. That's right. Uh, we had the we had Super, new 2DS. Yeah, the new 2DS with Super Nintendo. So, um, yeah. So we've 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 kind of collaborated a little bit. It's been it's been pretty cool. And so finally, our schedules aligned, and you're able to join us. But uh, let's uh, let's let's take a little like a little trip back. What got you hooked in gaming? What uh, what made you fall in love with Nintendo and, uh, you know, take us back to little well, six year old RJS or three year old, whatever, however old you were. I don't know how old I was. That's a, that's an interesting idea to figure that out. But my grandmother, uh, she worked in a bar and she worked the day shift where most of the harmless bar flies would hang out. <laughs> and my mom would take me to go so she could see her mom. Uh, and they had a Donkey Kong machine there and they would just give me quarters because they would take the quarters out at the end of the day and collect the quarters. So they would just give me a bunch of quarters out of the register and I would just sit there and play Donkey Kong nice. all day long while my mom was over talking to, talking to my grandmother and, um, uh, you know, the old, the old bar flies that were sitting there, I, I would go up to get more quarters and, and they'd be like, would you like a soda or would you like here have some dipsy doodles or whatever? Uh, those are corn chips for those of you that, that don't live in the U S. Uh, but I, that's, that's where I got hooked was, was playing that. And, uh, I ended up shagging golf balls out of the woods near my house and, uh, saving up all my money in order to buy my first home video game system, which was not a Nintendo. It was an Atari 2600. Um, but as soon as I got, uh, uh, an NES, I knew now nah, Nintendo's where it's at, but that, that first thing with Donkey Kong, that was so much fun. Very cool, man. Very cool. I, I was definitely an arcade rat. Brian, you did some, you did some arcade stuff back in the day, right? Yeah, mainly, uh, mainly pizza huts, you know, cause I used to actually have arcades and pizza huts back in the day. And a little bit like, you know, like at the local malls, they had like the arcade built in. So yeah, here and there. Hate, how about you? Did you spend much time in the arcade? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, there were the two malls in the town had a tilt and then I forget what the other one was called. And then uh, we have Wonderland still, which is, I, I don't know if everywhere has it or if it's a Northwest thing. But it's full blown arcade nowadays. Though it's like DDR and just crap like that. Yeah, arcades have really yeah. taken a dive. It's just like mm-hmm. ticket grabs. I, I'm lucky though. My wife is her cousin owns a coin op uh, company, and they just sold us a um, an Asteroids Deluxe arcade cabinet for sixty dollars. Oh my gosh! And it's working. Steel. Uh, no, it's not working. Okay. Uh, oh, that's... and I'm just going to yank all the parts out of it and make a, make a box. Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. That's awesome, man. So when you finally got a hold of the NES, what was, uh, what, how did you know you had magic in your hands at that point? Well, uh, okay. So if you, if you play, I only had one game. It was the, well, two games. It was Mario and Duck Hunt. They, you know, they came on one cartridge and you could put it in and, and uh, play them and duck hunt was cool i i I enjoyed it but uh mario that game was absolutely so fantastically designed i mean if you read interviews with miyamoto where he talks about how he makes the goomba there in that first spot so it kills you when you first start playing and then you're like okay well now i gotta learn to jump over it so then you run up to the goomba and you you jump over it and He placed it perfectly so that when you jump over it, you hit a box above and something shaped just like the Goomba, but looks different, pops out. And that kind of level design, that's what just pulled me in. It was just so well thought out. And before that, you know, playing on my Atari 2600, the 
the games were not well thought out for sure. Mm. Uh, so I think that that's probably why I just, I, I kind of fell in love with Nintendo as a company because they just, er, almost everything that they make is just so well thought out and po- and polished. And I think that's what I look for in games. That Goomba is the most deadly creature in any video game period. It's killed more. <laughs> it's taken more lives. Seriously. I, that, that meme that went out a few years ago was, was hilarious. What? So let's kind of just, we'll just kind of like rapid fire this a little bit. What are like, uh, what were some of the like favorites on the NES that like you could just play over and over again? Um, well, a lot of the multiplayer stuff, um, you know, taking turns on Mario. Uh, I played a hell of a lot of Zelda. Uh, I remember going to school and talking to my friends at school and saying, you know, having discussions about, man, if you go here and then you find this thing, and did, have you found the the whistle yet? And no, what is, what is the whistle? What does that do? Whistle? You know, that kind of thing. And and it, and it that's the kind of thing that has come back to uh, to gaming with the uh with breath of the wild because i feel like you those conversations are happening again and they haven't happened in a long time i don't think oh kind of kind of bringing us back to those playground conversations of like did you have you seen this and have you seen that like yeah you're totally right man i hadn't even i hadn't even thought about that but that's once you can finally talk about breath of the wild without people saying spoilers (laughs) you know like um that's the thing that's what we kind of mentioned it last week like that whole uh, being able to see where you've been on the map, like, I, did you find after you fired that up that you were like, I can't believe I missed this whole area? <laughs> Actually, I haven't done that. I've only done hard mode since oh, the okay. DLC came out. So I haven't loaded in my original save. I've only done hard mode and it's totally sucked me back in. I put in a hundred hours uh, into the original one and I'm already at like 50 wow. on hard mode. Wow. Wow, Destin or Hate? Did either of you guys fire that up to see? I still haven't. I haven't pulled the trigger on the DLC. Yet. Um, yeah, I looked at it the other day, and not much to my surprise. I the top left. What's that mountain range up there? Hebra. Hebra. I've spent almost no time up there, <laughs> so um, I'll probably backtrack over there. And there were a few other places that surprised me. The bottom right. I'm terrible with the names of these places. The like jungly area, the rainforesty. Oh yeah. Um, didn't spend a lot of time there either. So, um, and I remember viewing those spots, but it's hard. Maybe it was in stream or something. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, <laughs> RJS, I want to keep going, man. Was it Super okay. Nintendo the next, uh, was the next system on the, on the list for you? It was. And I played a whole bunch of Super Nintendo. Again, Zelda has always been a, thing that's been at like the forefront of of my gaming but um i think street fighter 2 was a championship edition Mm -hmm. i think that's uh that's the one that probably spent the most time in the actual cartridge uh and and i i i'm a huge fan of video game music as well and i i couldn't tell you who did what or or what's best but super nintendo had a really good sound chip and i remember that my mom would whenever i would misbehave she would ground me and one of the ways that she would ground me is she would take the controllers so i would leave the cartridges in and turn it on and listen to the music and i'd be like yeah i love this jokes music. on her yeah take that mom <laughs> just kidding mom you're awesome <laughs> Oh, that's cruel, man. That's cruel. <laughs> <laughs> that Street Fighter music, though, that was uh, that was just super classic. Like, I think I have the 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 music from the Ken stage. That's just constantly in my head. I'll just it just pops in there throughout my day. Yeah. Um, that and like you said, the the like the loading screen, not loading screen, but uh, like the the title screen music for that game. That's uh, Again, just randomly throughout the day, just pops into my head. That's rad. That's rad. That's for some. 
the one for me is Super Mario Brothers 2. That's like, you can ask, <laughs> ask mm-hmm. Destinot. Every time I'm getting these shows ready, I'm always like humming Super Mario Brothers mm-hmm. 2 for <laughs> some reason. It's just, it's always there. Like That and Creed. I don't get that. No, I do not do <laughs> Creed. <laughs> All right, so I think we're done here, right? <laughs> yeah, podcast over. I'm out. Mm, <laughs> oh my goodness. You guys are too funny. So... Was it Nintendo all the way through, man? Was it uh, was it sixty four, GameCube, so on and so forth? Well, I mean, okay, so I've I've had a Nintendo, and then the Super Nintendo, and then I had the sixty four. I had the GameCube. I've I've had all of the Nintendo consoles except for the Virtual Boy because who the hell owned one of those? Yeah, um, I want one. I'm sure Josh has one. Do you have one, Josh? I, no, I want one. I, I know where to get one at the moment I have the money for it. There you go. Um, and he will. He will. Because he always pulls the trigger on stuff. <laughs> but, uh, Stop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it wasn't always... Um, I wasn't what, I, what, what people would say would be loyal. Uh, because I was always kind of a, a grass is greener kind of kid. And I would see like the Sega stuff and I'd be like, oh man, that Genesis stuff, look, Genesis does what Nintendo don't. And I mm-hmm. want that. I want that. And so at, at some point I traded in my Super Nintendo. A lot of people are mad at me now. Put away the pitchforks, people. I can see them. Uh, but I traded in my Super Nintendo, got a Genesis, and I spent a whole lot of time playing. Um, oh god what is the name it's a turn-based strategy game it really reminds me of fire emblem but i can't think of the name of it general shining general shining chaos force. is the only one that comes to my mind <laughs> no 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 Sh- uh, shining force okay fantastic game and i played that religiously super fun game uh but then i ended up trading in my genesis to get the uh whatever the next Sega thing. And then eventually i went back to nintendo when when the 64 came out the saturn you had the saturn I had not only did I have okay, so I had I had the <laughs> Sega C D. Oh no, this would turn into a Sega ooh. show right now. I know. Well, I, I worked at a Babbage's, which is a video game yeah. store, oh, so I had yeah. a huge discount. Oh, uh nice. and I also well, I also made a little bit of money because we sold computer games and we were allowed to take them home and copy them. Uh <laughs> to so that we knew what the games were like. <laughs> of course. And so yeah, you know, people would science. come to me, hey man. Hey man, you got a copy of uh, you got a copy of this game? I'd be oh, yeah, I, I, you can for five bucks, you know hmm. that kind of thing. Way back in the day, I, I don't do that anymore, kids. Uh, don't hmm. don't pirate stuff. But uh, <laughs> so I had the money to buy uh, that stuff. But I had a Saturn, I had a Dreamcast. So I've had lots of different consoles. Uh, but Nintendo is my favorite. I have to ask because I've I've actually had hands on one because I had a neighbor that had one. Did you ever play the three DO? No, I did not. That thing was like seven hundred. No, wait, no, yeah. that's the Neo Geo. Uh, it was. I think it was like seven hundred bucks. It was either. It was either six or seven hundred dollars because I just watched a thing on YouTube on it the other day. Um, I never played cheap. a three DO. I did play an Atari Jaguar though. That thing was a mess. <laughs> <laughs> like the butt, the yeah. the controller had like a phone pad in the middle of yeah. it. It was a disaster. I don't know what they were you thinking. Can, you can get those now for I just watched online like eighty bucks. So yeah, I guess because out there on a Jaguar or three DO, I think those go for about the same amount. And you the think 3DO, they're going to? I was gonna say the three DO apparently had zero copy protection, so you can just burn games to disc, CDs, and play play all eighty games. Do you guys think that the uh, the upcoming Atari box is going to have? I know this is non sequitur, but do you think it'll have like uh, Atari Jaguar games on it? I don't know. It's supposed to have current. It said current PC hardware, whatever that means, you know. But like, <laughs> I, I I can't imagine why it wouldn't be able to run those games. It'd be interesting if it'd be interesting. I think if they had like every Atari game, including you know Jaguar, the old twenty six hundred stuff. Um, E.T. Because that would that would fit onto like one Blu-ray now. Yeah, if we get E.T. HD remake, it's game. It's all I need. <laughs> I'm good to go. I got a copy of E.T. right up there. I can't get up and reach it because I'll bump the mic, but it's right up there. Did you have to dig it up yourself or? <laughs> no, I, okay. I found it at a GameStop. Okay. <laughs> 
or not a GameStop, a game shop. Hmm. Um, sorry, I had to ban somebody from the chat. Um, Ugh. so that's always fun. I don't know. The, I feel like when we're in the talk show category, the, the trolls just love to come hang out. Like, I don't, I don't understand, but whatever that, that is the case. Let's, uh, let's end this little part here. RJS. Lastly, what would you say is your, out of all the Nintendo systems, what would you say the game that, that you don't necessarily say like your favorite or your desert Island game, but like, what would you say is one that you're like, you know, I could, I could, uh, I, I couldn't live without this one. Like what, what, what or maybe you played the most, what, whatever, what you find, you know, for me, it would be like a Mario Kart title, right? Like I could always go back to a Mario Kart title. Mm -hmm. That's a really tough one. I, and I think that mostly it's tough for me because I want to say breath of the wild, because that game has absolutely consumed me. But at the same time, I'm playing it so recently that I feel like it's in the forefront of my mind and it's making it hard for me to think of other stuff but when i'm not playing breath of the wild i am thinking about playing breath of the wild mm -hmm. and that hasn't happened probably since world of warcraft like when world of warcraft came out i was playing that game non-stop and when i wasn't playing it i was looking up stuff online about it and when i wasn't looking up stuff online about it i was going on the internet and or well not going on the i was uh i was talking to people about it and Breath of the Wild seems to have done that same thing for me. Uh, if we're looking at something more retro, and again, we're sticking with the Zelda category, is I've played through, I don't usually replay games, but I've played through Zelda um, A Link to the Past many, many times because it's so good. Gotcha. That's, that's one I have not replayed since I was a kid. And uh, I... I'm thinking we we have vacation coming up, and I have it on my I have it on my 3ds, so I may end up uh, I may end up Do jumping it. back into that one. So Do it. Um, but I loved it as a kid. It was it was great. Um, okay. Real quick, we'll do this again at the end, but I want to just kind of make sure it's uh, fresh in people's minds. Where can people find your stream and all that other stuff? Like, give us the quick lowdown. All right, I'm at uh, Twitter, Twitch and youtube at run jump stomp but if you're looking for my nintendo podcast uh you can find it at uh run jump stomp.com slash switchcraft okay awesome well guys i want to get into uh we're going to talk a little bit about this week's releases and then the news for this week and then we have a retro question because uh after looking over a handful of our reviews a lot of people want to they want to they want to talk about retro stuff a little bit so we're going to try to squeeze a lot into this this hour slot and uh so hopefully hopefully we can get there but uh this week's releases Splatoon 2 and Amiibos for days there's so many Amiibo coming out this week that oh it makes my wallet hurt so Guys, who's picking up Splatoon 2 day one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've got it coming. Yep, two oh, copies. Two copies. <laughs> okay. All right. Destinot. Yes. What's, it, what's, it, uh, what's Friday going to look like for you trying to play this game? <laughs> well, um, I think I mentioned before, my wife, she's a huge gamer. Um, She's like right now she's playing some game that's similar to like a Tetris style jewel game, but the the whole point of it is to get Disney emotes. Um, yeah, and it's that's my the wife type plays of gamer. that game too. Okay, yeah. So, <laughs> but that's the type of gamer she is. You know, she she loved like you know she likes Angry Birds, and I don't think she ever got into Candy Crush. But she's not uh, a console gamer or, or anything of the earth not hardcore at all but she loves splatoon for some reason it just um i think it was maybe the ocd factor of trying to get every single inch of the floor you know colored the correct color because she'll just sit there i'm like no no no, just just throw the ink out in a broad section and she's like no no no. there's this little corner here that's got like two inches of of you know no ink so 
Yeah, but she loves that game. So that's something that we can kind of share together. So, uh, yeah, Friday night is going to be us. Maybe a bottle of wine. I don't know. We might get crazy. Oh, fancy. Uh, yeah. Bottle of wine and some nachos. And uh, <laughs> so yeah. Much, huh? So much class, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, no, that's that's definitely a day one buy for me. Because, um, uh, yeah, I, I love the first one. I actually had a Wii U and played quite a bit of the original Splatoon. Um, I just got a whole bunch of flack for complaining about Destiny 2 not being new enough and looking just like Destiny 1. But if De- uh, Splatoon 2 is just like Splatoon 1, I'm actually okay with that. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Mm, yeah, I know it's bizarre, <laughs> but the fact is, I don't have a I don't have a Wii U anymore. Right. So, if Splatoon Two is just yeah. like Splatoon One, cool, I'll be able to play so, it again. So, does that mean Splatoon is that good of a game, or does it mean that Destiny just the community was better than the game itself, and that was the draw? Like, why is that? Um, it, I mean, I, I think if you're going to compare like uh, like Destiny being it's it's more of a traditional first person shooter um i really think splatoon is like apples and oranges compared to it no i just meant the you're you're fine with splatoon 2 being a new oh, coat of paint um, not. i i think the thing was uh splatoon changed a little bit over the course of its life but i i i felt that from the moment i put that game in or i should say from when i played the the, the demo of it uh i loved it i so and then it just clicked with me you know um i just enjoyed it from the first second i played it to the last time i played it and uh a game like destiny destiny we talked about this on the last podcast it just changed so much over its lifetime that i i really felt like it was never this is like the definitive version of destiny this is what it is this is where we're leaving it eventually obviously they're going to leave it as is now because they're going to stop you know, kind of like supporting it in a sense so it's going to end up the way it ends up but it just changed it evolved so much that i never felt like i could like kind of like get into a groove and be like okay this is the game i'm going to get good at this because it was always changing um splatoon though gave you more guns over time because they did a lot of like free dlc for that where it was just like hey new guns try this out um so when i jumped back into that game like way later on i was totally lost because i'm like i don't even know what i just got killed by because i don't, I just, I don't even know what these guns are um it was just fun though it didn't it didn't require that i know josh probably i know that was josh's concerns with splatoon where he's like oh man i can't just go around and, like headshotting people um it's just a different type of game um yeah, I don't know why. It just, it's just one of those games that clicked for me. Um, it clicked for me this weekend. Like, yeah. the first time I played it, it didn't, uh, it didn't click all that much. But jumping into the Splatfest, it, uh, it, it really did click. And I'm pumped. I'm pumped. How many of you guys played the Splatfest this weekend? I know Destinot missed it, and he was super sad about it. Every day they've had that... <laughs> That's Splatfest. I've like not been home, and I'm like, really? Oh, I played the, it the very first time the, that ever. The very first one I played. That I love cool. that Nintendo's doing it. I, I think it's great what they're doing, but the stupid times and three hour blocks. Like, oh yeah, I, I've got. I, I can't just drop everything to play a Splatfest. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a bummer. But I I think it may have been somewhat intentional, so they didn't completely melt the servers. Maybe. You know, but I again, I don't, I don't know. It's odd. I don't know why it wasn't like a weekend worth, you know, or I don't know. I I don't, I don't, I, I don't know. I call it pulling a Nintendo. They do ninety uh, percent amazing, and then ten percent like, who the hell made this decision? Get him out here so we can beat the hell out of him because they make so many decisions that are just so asinine. Yeah. And then you're like, but you guys are so good at making games. Somebody walked into a boardroom at some point and said, let's do this. And nobody told them no. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's mm-hmm. at least this was like, what it was like a four hours, a four hour yeah. play session, you know, better than the, the one hour ones that were just 
like that's true oh hang on let me set all my reminders on my phone so that my alarms are going off at certain times <laughs> like it's so bizarre it's just really bizarre but um but splatoon i, I want to spend just a, just a few minutes talking about splatoon 2 and and um what what's appealing about it uh to me the the competitive aspect of it has really it really clicked and um i played quite a bit with super nintendad and uh you know, we, we were in chat. We were, we got into our discord chat. Um, the app has just come out guys. So as if you're listening to this, um, tomorrow or today or whatever, um, the, the app is available as of right now, as of recording, you still cannot sign in. It still says it's the server is under maintenance. Um, so I played a lot of matches. Some of the matches we got (laughs) wrecked, just absolutely wrecked. Um, and then we started communicating a little bit better and, uh, um, things, things got better. Oh, Nintendo life was also, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mean to forget about you chief. Um, and, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he was, uh, he was, he was an animal in there that he's been, he's like, he's like our Splatoon pro. It's all he talks about in, uh, in chat usually is, is playing Splatoon and not being able to wait for Splatoon two to come out. So, um, but, uh, yeah, so we, when we finally started communicating, it really changed the, the, the way that game played. Cause before it was just kind of like run out and you kind of try to do your own thing and, and do your part, but it doesn't necessarily work that, that well. And if you can really kind of just, even if the communication's not there, if you can stick with one other person and kind of watch their back and, and help get the team, the team fire, like the team shots. I mean, these are like basic first person shooter, third person shooter, uh, uh, you know, like the one Oh one you're going to, you're going to do better, but then really utilizing like your specials and that kind of stuff. Like there, this game can get really competitive. And, and I, I really enjoyed that about it. Uh, um, RJS, did you, I know I saw you, I saw you post that you were playing. I tried to join you for some reason you weren't showing up on my friends list. And I was like, what is the deal here? So um, did, did you have a good time with it? I did. Uh, it, it's funny. Cause I, I recorded my podcast earlier today and I kind of took, I kind of held Splatoon 2's feet to the fire. I complained about a bunch of stuff that I didn't like. And I did, I even got some tweets from some listeners that were like, Hey, you know, where's the joy? And I, uh, all I can say is, you know, I got to call it like it is. The game is amazing. But again, they pulled a Nintendo and there's some stuff in there that's (laughs) just dumb. Uh, but the game is really, really fun. And I had a blast playing it when I was in, when you're in that moment. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, the only time you played was during the, the, uh, just the beta a few weeks ago. I've never played at all. all. No, I know. I've never done it. Nope. Okay. Well, you probably still calls it paint. Yeah, it's pretty much pain to me. <laughs> hey, I pre-ordered it. I'm gonna right the wrongs. Maybe yeah. we'll see. Uh, the, okay, the real question, guys: Who's buying the headset? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, we'll be sticking to Discord. <laughs> well, the thing is, um, unless there's some type of Nintendo magic in there, it looks to me like it's just a a splitter. That, that splits audio. Well, that's not made by Nintendo and, and mic. Yeah, so it doesn't look like it's proprietary. To you know, you could use you could probably use your what is it the the A forty mix amp. I, I have I get the feeling that's basically what it is. Um, yeah, that that that's just weird. I don't I don't know what's up with that whole. I mean, how do you thing. guys plan on playing Splatoon though? For the most part, you what do you mean like like are you gonna do docked or? handheld i mean obviously the beauty of everything okay i'll personally probably play it docked mostly because the game is fairly reliant on motion controls i know that you don't have to use them but i the thing about splatoon one that i hated was using i had to use the game pad and it was just too big uh and i didn't like the motion controls kind of wobbling it around like that I felt like using the Pro Controller, which seems to have disappeared from my desk somehow. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel like using the Pro Controller really felt very comfortable, especially the size. It, it felt comfortable to use the gyro aiming. So I'll probably only play, play it docked. So then, I mean, it's not too far of a stretch to use the phone app. I mean, shouldn't be. 
I, and it depends I know on you how far use, away yeah. you sit, though, right? Because you're talking about a cable all the way to your couch to your dock. No. I mean, if you no. game on a... Not from like your phone app. Top. You just have your phone in your hand. No, but if you want right, game audio, you have to have a cable coming out of your Switch you, also. No, you just run a old school underneath... No, and then you put no. your game audio on top of it. That's what Miyamoto right, you know, wants. You know what I said earlier about uh, pitchforks? Get them out. <laughs> well, that's also like you said, the whole Nintendo being Nintendo thing. Um, it's just very bizarre. Some of the stuff they do, like you know, with the, the this whole like workaround. You know, it seems like like we have the most portable system in the world. If you're wearing cargo pants and you've got something in every single pocket, <laughs> then 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 back. you can get some jingles. Yeah, uh, <laughs> then then you get the full you know Splatoon effect. You know, um, I, I assume they yeah. did some market research and they decided, no, oh, this app's going to be perfect because everyone's on. They had to have done something. Yeah, they went. But, we want to keep kids safe, so they can't figure out how to use this thing. Now, kids know how to use a phone. I'm a teacher. The kids know how, if they know how to use anything, they know how to use a phone. They're going to have no problem getting mom and dad's thumb. Uh, they bring it over to them and they just kind of, mom and dad's sleeping, passed out. They hold the phone up to their thumb and they get all signed in and junior's all set to scream racial slurs at uh, 40 year old men as they're trying to play a game because we're too slow. There's uh, other, I mean, maybe. There were rumors for a while that the Switch isn't strong enough to support the the chat and all that running in the background and try to pump out 1080p for their games. It's a rumor, but I mean, who knows? There has to be a reason. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. I've said this a million times. For Nintendo, a little transparency goes a long way, and if they would just tell us what the reason is, people would probably shut up but they're just so tight lipped and secretive that we're all like trying to come up with what the hell is the reason that they're doing this. That could be the marketing strategy though. Cause I mean, uh, maybe they're going off of the whole, like no press is bad press (laughs) mentality. I was like, Hey, they're hating. I'm pretty sure it's bad. They're talking about us for them to come out and say our systems underpowered and we can't pump audio chat through and play games at the same time. That's, that's not the look they want. No, that's true. Yeah, I, I think what it boils down to is they're like, hey, look, they figured out how to use the N64 controller, which technically took three hands. They can figure out how to hold a phone and play the Switch at the same time. Yeah. I will say that I, what I really hope, and I've said this before, is that the the phone app convinces me otherwise. Like right now, we have no idea what this thing is like, but maybe it's really friggin' cool. And if that's the case, then I'll be happy that they did it. But they haven't tried to sell it to us. And the Switch has been out for how many months now? Four? Four. Something like that. You would think that at some point there would have been a Nintendo Direct where they said, hey, this is why we want to do this phone app thing, instead of just dropping it a couple days before Splatoon comes out. Well, be wary. Don't don't cast your judgment on Friday, because it's probably a glorified beta right now. I mean, it was only rushed to get out for Splatoon, I'm guessing. And so don't don't assume this is the final product. Yeah, you know it's a beta because they aren't charging for it until next year right. now. So, well, so it looks like we'll be playing some Splatoon. Guys, I'll definitely be streaming it. Twitch.tv slash N64Josh. I know Run, Jump, Stomp will be streaming it as well. Oh, yeah. Destinot, maybe? Maybe. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not quite streaming yet, right? No, probably not. One day. One day. Maybe. Okay. Maybe someday. So let's. Uh, we're gonna get into some news here. So we already talked about our uh, our Splatfest impressions, which I thought were, were just Splatoon in general, and um, Fire Emblem Fates for Switch. Now I wrote these notes earlier, like uh, yesterday. Is this like is this rumor has it finally been like squashed is it fake do we know have we heard anything anybody know okay. I haven't heard anything Okay well so basically RJS you know you know the lowdown of this we we give us a quick quick rundown of what uh what this is about Well amazon.es which I think is Spain 
I love like, that you said Estonia know. on your podcast. I, I was, was like, being a smart Linkovich. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that, nice reach, man, Linkovich. <laughs> holy cow, buddy. Um, oh, so, uh, so Amazon.es they had uploaded a. It, it looked like a Nintendo Switch box art of Fire Emblem Fates Complete Edition, uh, and. I would buy it because that's three games for the price of one. And I only bought the first Fire Emblem Fates, so I wouldn't even feel like I'm double dipping. Mm. Okay. Uh, but then it was almost immediately taken down, but not before someone got screenshots. Right. Yeah. Super Nintendo saying the only thing that he knows the artwork is fan made cover from Tumblr. So that's uh, that's it. Fingers crossed, I guess. I mean, I've been trying. I've been honestly, I've been playing Fire Emblem um, Awakening. I played it this Sunday for a while. I'm trying to get back into that series. I wanna, I want to love it. I want to understand it. The storytelling seems to be great, and so anything that can help me get more into that series, I'm, I'm all about. Um, Destinot Fire Emblem Fates for you? Exciting? Don't care. What's the? Um, I'm like you. But one step back, the Fire Emblem games have always, I guess, have been intriguing to me. The only one I've ever touched is the one for GameCube, and I played it for like 10 minutes. So it's like right up my alley. Um, it's got the Japanese cartoon look for Josh. Um, <laughs> Great. Yeah. If you're triggered love, by calling so. anime cartoons, sorry. But Not no, I, I've actually never played a Fire uh, Fire Emblem game. Yeah, don't at me. Well, we have what it's Fire Emblem Warriors is confirmed. Is that what it's? Yeah, called? but that's like uh, that's like a typical Warriors game, you know. I don't think that's. I, it's not the same style of gameplay, you know. That's Dynasty Warriors with a skin. Yeah, yeah. that's like a button masher. It's not a strategy yeah. game. Yeah. And honestly, some of the, like, but it may be a gateway drug, right? Kind of like, uh, uh, heroes no, because is on I bought phone. Hyrule Warriors. I didn't like that game at all. Uh, well, maybe not for you, but maybe, maybe for, it may pique somebody's interest about getting into the, like getting to know these characters more. Honestly, mm. for me, get playing it on the, on the phone, the fire emblem game on the, on the phone. Like I log in, I still don't really know what I'm doing. I log in every day. I have over 400 orbs. I looked to like buy orbs. It's like, it's like, a, it's like 75 bucks for like 140 orbs. I'm like, I'm rolling in the dough on this game, but if only you could sell them. I know that's the same thing. <laughs> Dustin said, he's like, can you sell those? Um, Hey, You're how about living. you, buddy? You, uh, I'm, I'm standing even further back on this than Dustin. <laughs> I like, I don't even know what it is. Yeah, I've never even heard of this game. No, I, I'm kidding. I've heard of it, but okay. no, I never, never played them. So I have no, no idea. Okay. I'm always open to play a new good game though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I've thought about like going back and like, so, cause I asked a few people like, Hey, where should I start? And they said the Game Boy Advance games. But the problem is, is, uh, th those are so easy to, um, like they sell fakes on ebay all the time so it's like oh it's only seven bucks well you may get like a third of the way into the game and then it just stops because it's not a real <laughs> it's not a real thing so do you have a wii u uh i do yeah i was i was honestly thinking again vacation so i'm like oh i'll throw it in my i'll throw it in my sp and just play it uh play it there but um that may be the other option too then i can stream it as well see i, li I like where your head is at i like it um <laughs> Okay, this one is awesome, guys. I don't know if you guys all saw this or not, but Mario Kart VR is uh, a thing in Japan. It's it. I don't have all the details in front of me right now, but I watched the video. Basically, you've got to go to, um, you have to go to this place to play. It's not like it's coming out on a on a system or anything like that. It's it's being developed by Banco or Bandai Namco. I almost mixed the name up, um, and. Uh, or I maybe still did, um, but it looks amazing. Did anybody else see the video of this where like literally m like y you, you see um, like first person you're in the cart, you put your hand yeah. up, you can grab a banana, you can chuck a banana, you can chuck a shell, you can slam down with a hammer. Like the game looked gorgeous. 
I like I really it kill. I hope this comes to the states in some form. I'm 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 doubtful, but man, it looks like a ton of fun. Did any of you guys see this video? Yeah, um, I watched it. What was it? Was it three days ago? Four days ago? Oh, cool. that came out. Um, when you look down and you're playing as Yoshi, you can see your nose. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think you were awesome. going there. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Nintendo <laughs> podcast, uh, but it it looks really cool. Yeah, you have to throw the shell, and I think it only had three items. It was like a shell, a fire leaf, and fire flower. And what was the third? Do you remember? I don't banana. I, Maybe I, it was banana. I that saw would make a banana, a lot of sense. hammer. I don't know. A few a few okay. things. But yeah, it looked awesome graphically. It was pretty good. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so. Desson, did you see it? No. Well, you're you're going to. I'll make sure to get it. Yeah, I'll I'll look it up and check it out. You're saying like, oh, maybe we'll get it over here somewhere. Uh, you're saying it was in the arcade over there. It's like it. Oh, I don't know how to explain it exactly. It seemed like a almost like a VR bar kind of thing. Yeah. Like, like, I don't think it was an arcade. I think they were trying to show off the tech. Oh, okay. So, but theoretically, I was, it could move. I was going to say, yeah. Um, and then you mentioned Bandai Namco. Uh, Bandai Namco, same. Uh, well, they pub- they were the publisher for Pokemon Tournament. Right. Which originally was an arcade game that got ported to the Wii U. Yeah. So, and they also did G- is behind it GP, it. Mario Kart GP. That's the arcade version. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, sure, I mean, he says. <laughs> no, but I mean, if maybe you say so. could see it on Switch. Obviously, maybe not in VR form, but maybe a first-person Mario Kart. Maybe Wishful I thinking. You know? Yeah, I don't see there because I mean, like, I mean, I think with Nintendo, a lot of times, a lot of people are probably like, "Dude, I would love to see that." We were seeing it from. They had passed. Uh, I think it was Peach or somebody, and as they were passing her. They turn their head to look at them, and the other character turned their head to look at the one that was passing, and like their eyes met for a second. And I thought it was re- like I just I looked at that and I thought that's awesome. But even if it comes here, I am not strapping a disease-ridden thing to my face because my God, that's going to be gross. <laughs> so worth it. Just no. bring a Lysol wipe. I, yeah, I would do it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Mark all I can think it. of, all I can think of when you're saying like how the character will turn and like look at you. Uh, I think Josh has a a, a GIF or GIF, whatever, yes. tagged to his Twitter, and it's like the Luigi giving you that dirty look as he's driving. Oh, he totally so, dodges like a bomb, and then it blows up in Mario's face, and he's just like, yeah. <laughs> that's like an, all, that's all I can see now. Someone just like just like getting mean mugged by like you know Bowser. Oh man. So next up we had, we had Hey Pikmin come out on the DS 3DS, the demo. Um, I played it. Um, I know probably only RJS played it, right? Yep. I was right. What'd yep, you think? I played it. What'd you think? You said 3DS. I don't own one. I know. I know. It, I'm it not, was okay. I'm not mad, um, at, you. My face. I'm not mad at you. <laughs> He's mad. Look at him. I'm not mad. It's a smile. I can see the anger behind your eyes. <laughs> no, it's happening. Uh, I thought it was okay. I wouldn't. It's not a game for me. I'm sure. I'm. I'm glad that they're making it for somebody. I. The thing that I didn't like is just the control scheme. I felt like whenever I have to use my left hand with the thumbstick and then my right hand with the stylus on the 3ds, it's not comfortable. You always end up doing the the little pinky thing where you rest it on your pinky as you're playing, and it's. I don't know it. It wasn't compelling enough for me to go back to it. I almost felt like it was a game made for little kids. Oh, good. That's probably why I loved it so much. Mm. Did Did you like <laughs> the original Pikmin's? Were you a fan? Uh, yes, but this okay. has nothing really to do with those. Oh, really? Okay. Except for Olimar cannot fly a ship. Well, that's <laughs> that's pretty much standard, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here's the thing, um, and 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 maybe this will help some people out. The way I played that game is I held the DS with my with my left hand and then I put the corner, the bottom corner of the DS into my right hand and then just tap the screen. And so I, I didn't have to do anything with my pinky. It wasn't uncomfortable. But believe me, 
I played a I played a lot of the Zelda games on the original DS, and like they were excruciating. I don't know if you guys ever played Ninja um, uh, Ninja Gaiden on the DS, but like literally, you turn your DS like a book, and that and then you it was strictly stylus controls. That was it, and so it it, it sometimes it was rough, but it was it, some of them were kind of fun. So for some reason, this Pikmin game, I I really I liked it. Um, I can, part of the reason I liked it is the exploring. I found like a Zelda, like Link's Awakening DX cart. And I was like, well, that's kind of cool. Like I couldn't figure out how to get up to it, but like, it was, I'm like, oh, this kind of like treasure hunting, you know, I was like, this is, uh, this is kind of fun. It's almost like what I do in, in real life, looking for, looking for old games and stuff. So, um, I enjoyed it. My, my wife seemed to like it. I, I couldn't even get my daughters to play it. They were just like, Oh, whatever. I've got my phone or what, you know, <laughs> just, I think my daughter was going to download it. She's like, Oh, my DS is dead. And then she never came back to it. So, sure. but I, I, I liked it. I mean, I'm, I, I was surprised cause I was, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a huge fan, like Metroid hunters trying to play that. That was, that was rough. I like, I had thumb styluses that I found that I could strap to my thumb and hold the thing normally. And then just, uh, just use my thumb on the touch screen, which, which worked pretty well, but it's still kind of, it's still kind of goofy. So anyway, that's coming out next, uh, next, that's July 28th, I believe. So last, last thing I want to touch on, we got, um, smash in Evo, which the Wii Smash 4 had more viewers than Melee, which uh, surprised quite a few people. Um, I think when I, when I popped in, it was ending, and it uh, had 134,000 people watching it on Twitch, and I was like, wow, that's, uh, that's crazy. And I, I believe um, they, even, they even aired it on like Disney XD or something like that through, with, with yeah, the help did. of IGN. So that's pretty cool that it was seeing actual airtime on, on television. Not that that's really all that relevant anymore, but uh, you know, still, still a thing. Um, Did any of you guys catch like captain Logan got some of the highlights of that stream and showed me, and man, I love watching just top the, the top players go head to head and smash. To me, that's one of the most entertaining games um, to watch Every time I think, oh, I'm gonna really get into Smash, I'm like, I'm I don't have the time <laughs> to try to, to to figure this game out because it just it just seems beyond me. But uh, I love the idea and I really love watching it. Did any of you guys get a chance to see it? Only those videos that you said you saw that that Captain Logan posted. Um, yeah, I'm with you because there's a lot of these games that I like. For example, um, you know the Street Fighter games. Um, I haven't played arms yet, but you know, uh, smash brothers, I, I'm in no way, shape or form top level, you know, and to, to see what some of these people pull off, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, man. yeah. Just crazy. Hey, did you catch any of it? Uh, uh, just a very brief amount, but I mean, I saw it exist and I saw a little bit about it, but no, not really. Gotcha. RJS, did you, did you catch any of it live? I did not see any of it. However, I'm with you. I cannot possibly compete at the level that these guys do, but I do love watching that stuff. But I really enjoy watching uh, esports, and Smash is very fun to watch, especially when they get knocked off the platform like... 58 miles away and somehow they make yeah. it back. I'm like, how the hell are you doing this? They're cheating. <laughs> right. Right. And I, so I did watch a little bit of the melee tournament with my son and he's like, how do they move so fast? How do those guys get those characters to move that fast? Cause I've been playing smash with my boys since, uh, since melee, um, mostly on the Wii is when we played it. Cause they were just the perfect age for that. But he's just like, how, how is Fox moving around so quickly? I'm like, I don't, I don't know, man, the guys, they're hackers. I don't, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> and, uh, but magic. Yeah. Pretty cool. There is no spoon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So the last thing I want to just kind of mention is that arms is going to be at Japan Evo this year, which, uh, I know that's got a few people pretty hyped. Um, any arms fans in here? Yeah, I enjoyed it. 
I enjoyed Still it quite a bit. I haven't played it. I know. <laughs> I know. You need Every to remember that. Every time you say that. that, it bothers me. <laughs> it's a solid game. I, yeah, I mean, I, I would like to pick it up. It's just... Um, oh, it's the end of January. Sorry. Just want to clarify that. Oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. Thanks, Nintendo. It's one of those things Well, I will pick it up eventually, probably. Um, probably when everyone stops playing it, I'll get it and be yeah. like, there's no one on the servers. So, I, I don't know. It just... It didn't, uh, I don't know, it just didn't jump right out at me. And I am a big fan of first-party Nintendo games, so. Yeah, I don't know. I watched we'll the video where they announced it. It seemed like that it was weird, because they, sh- they, they had up on the screen uh, all the different games that were coming to the January thing. And when they said ARMS, or when they showed ARMS, it seemed like that got the biggest cheer. Hmm. Um, and I don't know if it's because people were just surprised or because people were that pumped for the game. I think I'm most excited to see what a professional arms player can do. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm not good by any means, but I have fun. I can only imagine those guys are just doing stuff I didn't even think was possible. Do you guys think that... um do you guys think Evo will make a requirement that you have to use motion controls or that you can play the way that you feel like playing? I've heard... Who, who was it? Someone recently told us that, you know, whoever the creator was, said that the Yabuki. preferred method, yeah, is um, motion controls. I think, Josh, you... Was it you said that you know you had only played on the controller and then you did try motion controls and you felt that maybe it was a little bit easier with motion controls? I think it's de- I think you have way more control with the motion yeah. controls than you well, do yeah, with I the guess, controller. Yeah, I wouldn't. I, I shouldn't say easier, but um, yeah, there's just like that that little bit of I guess you'd say like that competitive edge you get from doing it with the motion. I I feel like if that is in fact true then if you're at that high of a level, you're going to go with whatever gives you the most competitive edge. So, and if that's motion control, I I can't imagine there being someone that's using a controller. Um, yeah. It, well, if, and, if it in fact gives you that much of an advantage. Yeah, it might be negligible and the throw on a thumbstick versus throwing your arm might be short enough that it makes up for it. I don't know. I'd love to see how they play. Uh, Nintendo from the chat says that uh, um, some major tournaments have already been um, played and they were using uh, pro controllers. Mm. So, okay. yeah. But, I think it would be weird to have two people on stage where one person is way, flailing their arms around like a crazy man and the other person's sitting there with, a, with the thumbs. So... I don't know. I almost feel like Evo would have to say it's going to be one or the other. And I, I also feel like that would be a problem because then it's like, all right, well, I want to play, but I can't play the way that you told me that I have to. So I don't know. It's kind of weird. Captain Logan makes a good point. He says the trouble with motion controls, they can always say there was a problem with the joy con responding where now with the update to the switch, you can plug in the pro controller and tell it that it is a corded controller. So that may end up being the uh, the the way they say it it needs to be, but but who Al- knows? Although at E three they did have corded Joy Cons. Oh, interesting, mm. interesting. Well, mm. there you go. So who knows? We'll find out. It's exciting that it's uh, that it's being taken that serious, and that we might actually see uh, um, that we might get to see some some high level play. I'm stoked for that. So, um, guys, we're just about to wrap this thing up, but I have a question for our little uh, retro section here. And what is your favorite NES platformer that's not a Mario game? So NES, 8-bit, favorite platformer, um, you know, and doing a little bit of Googling, even for like some top 10 NES platformers, games like Mega Man, Contra, um, some of those games were, were you know, because I somebody said Contra, like, is that a... Pl-? Well, you do a lot of jumping in that game. So, I mean... Technically, technically, could be could be a platformer. So, um, you know, the, the, a lot of the Capcom games, like Disney games. Um, what do you guys think? And do you have any off the just the the right off the top of your head? You guys need to think Teenage about Mutant Ninja Turtles. The first Side one, count. yeah, yeah, with the van, 
with the dam with the dam where you got to disarm the well, bombs. Well, the dam, but yeah, the van you could drive around briefly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. run over the foot shoulder soldiers. <laughs> so that'd be your that'd be your favorite from NES. Yeah, probably. I've okay, played cool. that a lot. Cool, Destina. Well, I, yeah, I, I don't know if I consider Contra to be a platformer. If so, I mean, I think that's definitely like maybe maybe a, a hybrid, you know, shooter platformer. Um, that that's like one of my favorite games of all time. So I mean, if we're putting that in the mix, I'm I'm definitely gonna go with that. Um, okay. Yeah. The other one, the other only other one I was gonna really think of. Um. Oh man, I just lost it. Come back to me. I'll remember it. Cause I, I we were talking about this the other day, and I, a boy in his blob. No, no, no. <laughs> come back, to you. come back to me on that one. <clears throat> okay, I'll remember it. RJS, how about you? Favorite? Uh, Bionic Commando. Ooh. I loved Bionic Commando when I was a kid. Good choice. Uh, especially like the that ability just to throw that arm in there. And to be able to swing and land those jumps, it always felt really good when you nailed a good swing and then land. Uh, and and especially because you could also shoot midair. Uh, yeah. I loved Bionic Commando, and I especially liked when Hitler's face explodes. <laughs> that was cool. There was especially just a grittiness to that game. Like, I, I, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Very and if cool. you've never played the remake, you should. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> There you go. Well, I know I kind of talk. I think I may even talked about it last week, but like DuckTales was probably mm. one of my favorite uh, platformers that wasn't wasn't Mario. Like running around with Scrooge, doing the like the little pogo jump on his uh, on his cane, that kind of stuff. Using the cane as a as like a like a golf club, like all that stuff. I I loved it. I could play that game over and over and over again, and. Uh, yeah. And you know, I hate to admit this. I don't have that game in my physical collection yet. So hmm. I need to, I need to write those wrongs very soon. Um, Destin, did you think of yours yet? Cause if not, I have a handful of tweets to read real quick. Uh, I do remember it. Um, and I love this because it was co-op and I think I've said a while back that a lot of the games I played when I was younger on the NES and, and going forward were a lot of the co-op games. Cause me and a buddy of mine played a lot as uh chip and Dale's rescue Rangers. Oh, oh yeah. Classic. Cool. A lot of that game. Really yes. like that one. Yeah, the Capcom games were 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 top notch. So, um, so I asked the same question on Twitter, and uh, I'll give you guys some answers real quick. This is uh, at Jimmy Pike HK. He said, "There's only one right answer with a GIF of Mega Man." Um, <laughs> and then I'm not going to read the conversation. Destin not continued to have with him. Um, read it. This is a kid show. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Destinot actually put Sesame Street one two three Astro Grover and Ernie's Magic Shapes. Do you want to uh, elaborate on that? I don't think that was a platformer, if I remember correctly. That was um, I had that game. I think you told me that's like worth bajillions of dollars now because they look. didn't it, they didn't sell well. They were like those learning games, just right. like Donkey Kong Math, you know, yeah. um, or Donkey Kong Junior Math. Um. That was when my mom was like, no violent video games. But we were just like so hard up for video games. They're like, well, fine, we'll buy that one. (laughs) I love it. I love it. So we got uh, at Rempacy, Remy Ransom. He's a good good buddy of mine. Uh, Ghosts and Goblins. Thaddeus Mm -hmm. Prime says Castlevania or Ninja Gaiden. Um, Draco Augustus, Castlevania. Uh, Mr. Divian, Hudson Adventure, Castlevania or Mega Man. I said one, buddy. I said one uh mick shivers is <laughs> prince of persia so that's, mm. that's i played that a lot i don't i don't remember that game on nes i never played it anyway but i played it a ton on the game boy which um that was fun um yeah. game freak elite ninja gaiden and uh then uh scott underscore seven 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 says his chippendale um uh, pale rider 36 adventure island adventures of lolo um those are different but he loves them both uh so pdj gaming has a gif of mega man uh johnny caged 85 teenage mutant ninja turtles it was hard as heck and sometimes unfair but i loved it 
Um, and then I don't know if these are just trolls or what, but Dr. Zero Hour said Luigi's Mansion. And uh, <laughs> Emo Killa with two A's said Pikmin. Mm. So, you know, I mm. mean, you get an A for effort, I guess, guys. But uh, anyway, hey, we're at an hour four. I think we squeezed a lot into this episode. Let's put a bow on this thing. RJS, tell us all the places people can find you. Uh, Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Just look for Run, Jump, Stomp, or you can just head on over to runjumpstomp.com. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us, man. We appreciate it. I had a blast. Good, dude. Good. Destinot, where can we find you, man? You can find me at Destinot TLC. And uh, like we said in the last podcast, uh, head over to uh, twitch.tv slash Destinot. Or you can uh, pre-follow for what's to come. <laughs> hmm. That sounds you like can a pre- threat. You pre-donate, too. I don't know if you're going to get anything for it, but uh, hey. <laughs> Be the first to see what you get. Uh, hey, where are the, the few places people can find you? Um, Dark Alley. No. Uh, right now, behind I'm you. beyond the... Yeah, right behind you. Turn around. <laughs> uh <laughs> I'll be on the Discord, you know, either N64 hate or hate not, depending on my mood that day. We'll see which one sticks. Awesome. Awesome. Sodium level. Yeah. Yep. Right, right. Um, I do want to read from the chat here. We did get a few answers here. Um, Captain Logan said Aladdin, but I think that's Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo said Little Nemo, Dream Master. Good. Good. Um... And, and correct me if I'm wrong on Aladdin, but I only remember it on Super Nintendo. Super Glove Ball NES. Was that a platformer? I don't know. They're, I think some of these guys are just uh, just trolling. But it's, uh, it's it's fun nonetheless. <laughs> uh, Captain Logan said Kirby's Adventure. No one went with Kirby's Adventure, which I just played for the first hmm. time this last yeah, week on my retro stream. pleasantly streams. surprised, weren't you? I really loved that game. I'm really sad I didn't play it as a kid. I would have. I would have really enjoyed it. But uh, more than likely, my mom would have said, that looks magical. Get it out of our house before it catches fire and takes you to the seventh <laughs> level of hell. So, you know, um, love Rygar. your mom. Rygar. Well, Captain Logan. Looks yeah, magical. Rygar was, uh, that was a fun one. That was, that was also a pretty good, I was, th- when, every time I hear the words um, Bionic Commando, I always get Rygar and, and Bionic Commando kind of mixed up, like, it's just something I do in my head, but uh, yeah, future soldier Conan wannabe. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I guess. I guess. <laughs> uh, Super Glove Ball NES, he said, was the first motion control game. Yeah, Power Glove. That worked lovely. <laughs> <laughs> so um, he said, I don't know that one. I just remember Marble Madness. Okay, well, there we go. I loved Marble Madness. Yeah, Marble Madness is good stuff. It's good stuff. Well, guys, you can find me on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, all the places, N64Josh. Um, I am streaming basically daily. Um, we're doing these shows on that on my, on my personal Twitch channel now. Um, this one's at 9 p.m. Pacific. The, the, if you enjoy Destiny and you want to come check that out. That's at 7 p.m. Pacific, both on Tuesdays. Um, you'll be able to find any of the show notes and uh, we're starting to get more contributors on the loot cave.com. So you can go to loot cave.com slash NPC 27. I think that's what this episode is. I think that's what we decided. And uh, 28, 28. There we go. So NPC, or I'm sorry, the loot cave.com slash uh, NPC 28. So, um, there you'll find the links to, uh, RJS and, and Destinot and our discord, which is the loot cave.com slash NPC discord. And lastly, we got a handful of reviews. The last one, the most recent one we got said that they loved Destinot's saltiness and my mm. lack of saltiness basically. <laughs> so I got a, I got a good kick out of that. Um, if you guys feel like leaving us a review, let us know. This is kind of going to be more of the, like the, the layout of this show. Like we are, uh, I want to try to really stick to notes and, um, you know, kind of talk some news, talk some retro stuff, talk about releases and, and talk about what we're playing and then interview our guests. So, um, if you're liking that, let us know if you hate it, let us know. We appreciate it either way. So uh, thank you so much. And uh, if you're in the chat, 
Thank you for being here with us live. Riddell, Captain Logan, Super Nintendo, Nintendo Life. Um, looks like Ethan90. Um, and anyone else that's just kind of lurking. I can't even see because my thing shows offline. So um, mm. thank you, guys. And uh, boys, this has been fun. We'll see you guys next week. Later. Adios.